you want to continue to follow our adventure, click subscribe. So you don't miss anything, click the bell notification. I had someone ask me uh, the other day if uh, I'd ever made a video about what we plan to do when we get old. And it wasn't so much that he was worried what we're going to do when we're old. It was more what we're going to do when our health starts failing. And he specifically asked about Alzheimer's. Well, I mean, I've never really known anybody with Alzheimer's, so I can't really speak to it. I, I, I knew one person, but I was pretty shielded from that person when I was young. So I don't want to comment about Alzheimer's. But I could comment about some common uh, types of degrading old age issues. I don't even have to be specific about the type of uh, issue. I can just say, uh, okay, uh, we have a debilitating thing that is going to make it where it's impossible to live in a van, car, truck. Now, I had made a video about this uh, to answer the fellow's question a long time ago, but it's a good idea to go ahead and go through it again. The reason I made that video was I watched someone on YouTube say that they intended to die in their van, that that's... They, they didn't see any reason to move back into a stick and brick when they got old because, you know, they, they, there's just no difference in the, in the lifestyle. Well, I don't know if that's true. And so I've kind of objected to that idea. And I think that it's important to recognize that when you do get old, I don't think van life is going to be the way to go. Uh, I don't even know if RV life would be the way to go unless you could find a spot where you could just permanently park and live out the rest of your life in that, in that camping spot. But let's just assume that we're not talking about being in a paid site. Let's assume that we're talking about BLMs because that's what the fellow was talking about. Living in a BLM in a van for the rest of, until he dies. Let's just say that you came out here for the same reasons a lot of people come out here because you don't have a lot of money. And that's a big reason why a lot of people come out here. So we're just going to work on this scenario that uh, you don't have a lot of money. Uh, you came out here to save money. It's cheap. As you get older, things on your body is going to start to fail. So let's just assume for a minute that you're going to have to start wearing diapers. So that's a, that's a thing that fails on a lot of folks. Trash service is a real big issue out here. There isn't any. Now you can find some campgrounds that have trash, but I would imagine with the amount of diapers that you're going to have to go through, you're probably going to fill up these trash cans that were designed for, you know, somebody to come out to camp for the weekend. You know, they only pick up these trash in, in these bear proof trash cans you know, once a week or so and that's in the rare occasions that you can find them i think i've been what two maybe three campsites that had trash most likely especially in a blm you're not going to have trash service that means you're going to have to take your own trash either you're going to be driving back and forth to town all the time taking care of your trash or you're just going to have to figure out a way to collect trash that's just a, a big issue now the other thing you're gonna have to think about is anybody who may be caring for you. You may have medical assistance that comes out to your uh, house once a week or a couple times a week, comes out and, and checks on you, give you your medications. Well, I do know that you have to have a permanent address for some of these medical facilities to even come out to. You have to have a permanent address. Well, if you're out in a BLM moving around every two weeks, you're not gonna have that permanent address. So you're not going to be able to get medical assistance. Another thing you're going to have to worry about is your ability to drive. You're going to have to be able to drive every two weeks to get to your next location. Now, as you get older, your driving skills may not be as good as they used to. It's, if I'm not mistaken, I think some states actually require you to get a driver's test every year at a certain age. Or every few years at a certain age. If you can't pass the driver's test, you may not be able to uh, live in your van. Well, what are you going to do when your van is your home? Uh, another thing that may come up that might impair your ability to drive is medications. As you get older, doctors put you on stronger and stronger uh, painkillers and different types of medications. And a lot of them, you probably shouldn't be driving in. I would think a lot of them you're, you could be considered under the influence. I do know that everyone's daughter got sick, they put her on medication and, and she's not able to drive anymore because of the medication. You know, these are real scenarios that you got to think about before you just say, well, I'm going to die in my van. Yeah, I mean, dying in your van sounds very romantic until you actually have to think about all the pain that you're going to have to go through to do it. Now, for some reason, people think that when you come out here, it's the end of work. You don't have to work anymore. Life is just perfect. Yeah, you don't actually have to go work for an employer anymore. I, I, that may be true. I mean, I work online. You might be able to collect Social Security. 
But that's really when the work starts is when you come out here. Think about this. If you have to wear diapers on a regular basis, you're going to need to take probably more showers, keep you cleaner. Wet wipes is not going to keep you clean. And even if you do use wet wipes, you're going to have a ton of trash. You're just collecting more and more trash. Now, Carolyn and I take showers, which would help with the situation. Yeah, we could take a shower to keep clean and whatever other infections that may occur. If you don't keep clean, well, here you go. Now you got to set up your shower every day and you got to carry water. Most van dwellers probably carry five gallon jugs. Carolyn and I carry five gallon buckets. We carry eight of them. And I have to pick those things up, lug them around. I got to go fill them. That means I got to drive to town every uh, week to go get more water. This is all going to have to be done while you're living in a van. Now, I've, I've talked to several people in the comments of the YouTube channel that have asked me for suggestions on what they're going to do about water because they don't have the strength or, the, or their back injuries don't allow them to carry water anymore. Well, I'm, to be honest, I don't have another suggestion. I mean, you might be able to get a wheel around cart or all these things, but you're still going to have to pick it up and pour it. Uh, you're going to have to be able to figure out a way to maneuver it and do things with it. I guess there's some options, but I'm telling you, these options are not going to be very easy. Even if you got a two-wheel uh, two cart that you could wheel around, we don't have the room to actually carry around a two-wheel cart. So this is not going to be an option for us. I mean, now, as you get older, I do know that family members will tend to want to help you uh, with some of your daily chores. Well, if you're living out in the desert, it's unlikely that your family members are going to come out and visit you and, and help you. This is important. Carolyn and I do have this contingency plan. If Carolyn gets sick or vice versa, we have an emergency fund that we're immediately going to stop to and, and go get a stick and brick. That's our back employment plan is to go get a stick and brick, you know, wherever, whatever area that we like, and we're going to move into it. Well, that means you have to have an emergency fund. Before I said that, you know, a lot of people come out here and they don't have a lot of money. There are a lot of people that come out here don't have a lot of money. We've been in this adventure for a year and a half, and we've already had to dip in our emergency fund three times. If you don't have an emergency fund, there is absolutely no way you can get back into a stick and brick and, and, and do this. And I just don't see where the logic is that you're going to just live in your van. There are just too many scenarios that I can think of that's going to keep you from being able to live in your van if you're too old and too sick to do the chores that you have to do that takes physical strength. Thanks for watching. Like if you like the video and happy travels.